Hello, Transcast here. So it's been a year since I started the FNAF drawings on DeviantArt. It started with this picture here. Back then, I thought of just doing a few pictures and that's it. That changed because of the fans, you guys. And I thank you guys so much for sticking with me. About a month ago, I made an announcement that I was going to make this video and if you guys had any questions, I'll answer them here. You guys asked some good questions, so let's start. The first one, I'm actually going to combine two questions into one. Adriana the Dragon asks, Will Dora Bear and Good and Foxy appear in your AU? And AMTB... Wait. Oh! IMTB! Sorry. Anyway, they ask, Is BB and JJ ever going to appear in the AU? The answer for both, I have zero plans for them right now. Now, considering how annoying BB is, I don't like him. So, sorry, but screw him. If he were to make an appearance, it's going to be with the Mediocres. As for uh, Dreadbear and Grin Foxy, perhaps after the next comic, if I can find a place for them. Not making any promises, though. The next set of questions are asked by IMTV. First one, what happened to the... Two shadow characters, are they still relevant? Great question. I haven't drawn much of them since after Finally Free comic. But they have been with the toys. They will actually make a sh short appearance in the next comic. Next question. Why are there security guards present when previous comics shows that the originals and the toys can defend themselves quite efficiently? Okay, here's my thought process for this. For Toy Freddy, it makes the business look better. For the original Freddy, he has this system. First, looking for anyone that could pose to be a danger to kids. If so, hire them and get rid of them. If no one is a threat to kids or they have just killed a guard recently, then they will hire one to get them a head start to life until they find their career job. Next, specifically, what makes characters gain their soul powers? Is it through different methods depending on who resurrects them? Okay, I'll explain it the best I can of what I've been thinking. To go back into a body, the soul needs to be opened up. By opening the soul allows them to access their powers. Marionette's way of necromancy is magic and rituals. Well, William's resurrection is science and technology. Both ways work kind of obviously, but both come at a price. We have seen some of William's results, but I've yet to show him Marionette's side effect, which will be shown during the next comic. And then, will there be any future FNAF comics beyond this next one? I plan for this one to be the last big FNAF comic I'll do. I'll do smaller ones, but this is it. This is why I'm going all out on this one. IMDb had actually asked one more question, but I want to save that question for last. You'll see why. So instead, I'm going to go to a different question. So Delta Heart Stuff asks, what inspired you to give them powers? That is a very good question. Number one, I like magic. D I like it. And number two, I wanted this AU to be different from everyone else's. I haven't seen anyone else done this before, aside from Goldie's teleportation and Marionette's either the string power, flying, or the necromancy, and it's just stuff like that. The typical stuff you probably would normally see. Just never seen it for anybody else. So that is why I gave them powers. Now this last question has been asked by IMTV. What was your thought process of making certain characters like Mango being a drag queen, Yendo being skinless, and Marionette being a demon puppet? Now, I'm going to explain most of them as best I can within this video. First, I want to talk about is Plush, Jacko Chica, and Jacko Bonnie. Why aren't they with the Nightmares? I found Plush to be too cute to be with the Nightmare Gang. Plus, I like the thought of Spring Bonnie becoming a father for the little guy. As for Jacko Chica and Jacko Bonnie, they just don't fit in with the nightmares in this AU. 
The main issue is that there's two of them instead of one. If it was one, then yes, it would fit. But because there's two, it doesn't work out. I'll explain why it does not work out in a bit. So instead, they help Rockstar Freddy make more money by helping with fire shows. Next I want to talk about is Ennard. Here in this AU, Ennard is a combiner. It takes Bon Bon, Funtime Freddy, Funtime Foxy, Ballora, and Baby to make him. This is the confusing part that actually confuses some people, but I'm going to try to explain it here. While it takes the five to make Ennard, they are not him. And he isn't them. He is a completely new person with a new soul. They, the five, have no control over his thoughts nor his action. As I said, he is his own person. Hopefully I explained that one well. Next I want to talk about is Toy Freddy's wonderful personality. I wanted there to be someone who, despite being a good guy, he's a jerk that nobody likes. His attitude towards kids with special needs was inspired by some lovely people I actually have to deal with in real life. I heard you have ADD. Well, ADD doesn't exist. A dying man said that mental disorders don't exist. What, do people on death beds have infinite amount of knowledge or something? Oh, I don't want to hear about autism or else I'll be autistic. Five minutes later. I have the same symptoms you're describing, so that means I'm autistic. And so on and so on. Yeah. Lovely, isn't it? The next two to well, talk about is Mango and Funtime Foxy. Those that know in this AU, they are drags. Mango is a drag queen, while Funtime Foxy is a drag king. I actually did the drags because of the whole gender thing. As you can see with Mango's first lovely design, I try to incorporate both genders into one, inspired by this drawing I've made before. That worked out good. This did not, for as you can see. Uh, so after a bit, that's when I thought of having Mango be a drag. He gets male, but dresses up as a female, so that works with both genders. Funtime Foxy, being the opposite, was actually more simple for what I have in mind. Despite having the pronoun he, Funtime Foxy is still part of the girls' night and ladies' night from the sisters' location custom night and the ultimate custom night. So, therefore, I figure having Funtime Foxy be a female, but dresses up as a guy, because that way, that works for both. The next two to talk about is Endo and Yendo's design choices. For Endo Skeleton, I mean it's in his name. He's all skin and bones. It's made up for his morphing ability or putting on different costumes as an animatronic. Well, Yendo, he's meat and bones. The way the sister locations has that wiring on the animatronics, it makes it look like they have muscles. Since Yendo doesn't have an outer shell like the others, it seems like he is skinless. So that is where that idea came from. Next I want to talk about is the Nightmare's design choices. I wanted to make each of them unique from each other, but still in a way tie them together. That is where I decided to have them be based off of different phobias. Like, Nightmare Bonnie's design is based off of traumatophobia, the fear of injury, and Nightmare Foxy's is osteophobia, the fear of bones. This design choice is why I say Jackal Bonnie and Jackal Chica doesn't fit here in this AU. Both of them would have similar design and similar phobia representation. Could I have somehow made it work if I tried hard enough? Perhaps. But I am quite content with their placement with the rock stars. Last but not least, Marionette, also known as the Demon Puppet. There was a lot to talk about him, but for time's sake, I'm just going to talk about a few things that are worth mentioning. First, he is known as a demon because he is one. 
I went with this because one, it was the best explanation to how Marionette came back to life without seemingly needing any assistance. And also, I want to go with this vengeful personality and have that be the source to literally everything. Next, there has been some mentioning about the curse he has. It limits his usage of the necromancy power by needing to sacrifice his own body part to resurrect someone. Let's face it, if it wasn't for that limit, then he would be resurrecting every single kid that has been killed. And over the time span of 30 years, that would have been probably a lot of kids. So that is why he looks like a puppet. There's actually one more part of this curse, but I'm only gonna share a small portion of it here. If he dies, those he re resurrected will die with him. That is it for all I have to share. Uh, special thanks to Adriana the Dragon, As Fast for Friends, and Angel Heart Disney 124 for their wonderful fan arts. And also, thanks to friends such as Minion Lily, Explosion Mare, Mick Dog Warrior, Bon Crammer, the Venom Symbiont, Live Flashlight, Bun Bun Bunny X3, Cop Girl 862, Ask the Finesse, IMTV, Delta Heart Stuff, Shadow Jumper 3, Winter Evergreen Snow, and everyone else. Thank you guys so much, and hopefully you guys will enjoy the next comic, which will be coming soon. Bye!